Hey, what's up everybody? This is Jessie with Minimalist Accounting and I'm back with a new video for you guys today on the Fair Value Framework. We are going to begin our quick study by looking at the Fair Value definition, the calculation of Fair Value, and we're going to wrap it up with a fun example to put it all together. Let me begin by putting this in the simplest form. Many a times, a company needs to put a value on its financial asset or liability. Now, there are many ways to do so, but one of the most commonly used methods is the fair value approach. By fair value, we simply mean to assess what is the item worth today. Now, with that in mind, let's look at the accounting definition of fair value. Fair value is defined as the prize that would be received to sell an asset or paid to transfer a liability in an orderly transaction between market participants at the measurement date. Calculating the fair value involves two easy steps. First, we identify the principal or most advantageous market, and two, we will calculate the fair value with a given selling price. Step 1. Remember, our goal is to determine the maximum value and get us the highest and best price available. A principal market does exactly that. It is defined as the market available to the entity with the greatest volume and level of activity. Another market that helps us accomplish this is the advantageous market, which is defined as the market that maximizes selling price or minimizes the transfer price. Step 2. Calculating that fair value. Now, this is an important one. So when calculating the fair value, we take the selling price that we determined from the market in step 1 and make a few changes to it. Remember that we will not include the transaction cost, but we will include the transportation cost. Let's put it all together with an example. Dink Company chooses to report a financial asset at its fair value. The asset trades in two different markets. However, neither market is the principal market for the financial asset. We are also given the selling price and transaction cost of that asset in the first market and the second market. The question asks, what amount should be reported as the fair value of the asset. Let's break it down. I have the problem duplicated from the previous slide in this first section here. The problem tells us that neither of the two markets is the principal market. That means that in our step one, we are going to determine which of the two markets is the most advantageous market. Now, how do we define that? You got it, it is the market that maximizes the selling price. Grabbing that table up from the first section, we are now going to calculate the final selling price for each market. That's very easy to do. We simply grab that selling price and subtract the transaction cost. So for market one, we have 82 minus six, which gives us $76. And similarly for the market two, we have 81 minus one, giving us a final selling price of $80. Comparing 76 with 80, well, we know that 80 be beats 76, and we also know that that pertains to the second market. We have a winner. Let's run with that onto our final step, step two. This is where we will calculate the exit price or the fair value of the asset. Our instructions tell us not to include the deduction of the transaction cost in the selling price. So, we are simply going to grab the selling price of the market 2, which is $81, and not deduct the transaction cost. So, our answer is simply $81, and that is the fair value. In conclusion, remember the definition of the fair value. Remember that to calculate the fair value, we first identify the principal or advantageous market. In this step, we do include the transaction cost. In the final step two, we determine the fair value 
by grabbing that selling price but not including the transaction cost. That's it folks, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. See you in the next video.